here we are going to discuss about the malignant vascular neoplasm which is the angiosarcoma. So these angiosarcomas are common malignant neoplasms of vascular endothelial cell origin. So whenever a question is asked like what is the most common malignant neoplasm of the vascular endothelial cell then your answer should be angiosarcoma. So these angiosarcomas may arise at a number of different body sites but the most common form of angiosarcoma which is the Wilson Jones angiosarcoma occurs in the head as well as neck region of the elderly individuals with other sites including soft tissue, breast and liver. But what are the most common sites? The most common sites are head and neck region right and what are the other sites? Breast, soft tissue and liver more commonly seen in elderly right. So these are the important MCQ points. Generally, these angiosarcomas can arise in the setting of lymphedema, classically in the ipsilateral upper extremity. For example, whenever there is a lymphedema in the upper extremity for several years after radical mastectomy, that is with the lymph node resection for the breast cancer, in such conditions, this angiosarcoma may arise where lymphedema is present because of the resection of these channels. In such instances, the tumor arises from the lymphatic vessels that is called as lymphangiosarcoma. So lymphangiosarcoma is more commonly seen after the radical dissection after the breast cancer, which means which are more commonly seen in women above the age of 45 to 50 years. Those are the individuals who are more prone to carcinoma of the breast. So such kind of neoplasms are called as lymphangiosarcomas because they are arising from the lymphatic vessels rather than the arterioles and capillaries. And the current 5 year survival rate is a very very important question what you will see in the exam about the angiosarcoma specifically. So the current 5 year survival rate is only about 30 percent but I am not discussing about the lymphangiosarcoma but in general if we discuss about angiosarcomas there is a strong male predominance but when we discuss about the lymphangiosarcoma female predominance is more common. So this is how you need to remember the MCQs. Angiosarcomas overall if they ask as a question there will be male predominance. If they ask about lymphangiosarcoma, female predominance, right? Yeah. But more commonly they will ask like angiosarcomas more commonly seen in, then your answer should be automatically males. So what are the risk factors for this? The important risk factors for the development of angiosarcoma includes the history of radiotherapy, Nowadays, which is considered to be the most common cause when compared to other causes and the foreign materials example like sharpnel, steel, plastic, dacron which are present in the body and chronic lymphedema in the settings like already I discussed about the radical mastectomy and the environmental agents such as arsenic poisoning and the vinyl chloride all these also can cause angiosarcomas. As I already mentioned about the angiosarcomas or the malignant neoplasms of the vascular endothelial cell origin, these are very aggressive tumors that tend to grow rapidly and recur locally and they metastasize widely. That is the reason the prognosis of the angiosarcomas is extremely poor. And what about the 5 year survival rates? The 5 year survival rates for overall angiosarcomas are less than 20 percent. This itself indicates how severe these neoplasms are. This is mainly due to the biologic behavior of the tumor as well as the delay in the diagnosis because in the initial stages these are often asymptomatic. Because 
Initially, the lesions may mimic ecchymosis or cellulitis. That's the reason majority of the patients neglect. And the medical personnel should maintain a high degree of suspicion and inquire about the systemic signs of malignancy. Immediately, once you see such kind of uh, signs, you have to check for weight loss, fatigue, as well as the mass that can give you an indication that the patient may be suffering from an angiosarcoma. So, we also have one type, a specific type of angiosarcoma is called as the hepatic angiosarcomas. So, these hepatic angiosarcomas are associated with certain carcinogens including arsenical pesticides and polyvinyl chloride, one of the best known examples of the human chemical carcinogenesis. And the multiple years typically transpire between the exposure of these chemicals and subsequent uh, tumor development. So, in the exam, they will ask you what is the most common cause of hepatic angiosarcomas. Then your answer should be automatically the vinyl chloride or arsenic, especially the arsenic is the one they often ask in the exams. So, this is about the biological behavior of the neoplasms. Next, we often have to discuss about uh, the morphology. When we see the skin, in the skin, these angiosarcomas begin as a small and sharply demarcated lesions, which are often regarded as uh, asymptomatic red nodules. There is a reason, because they are asymptomatic, they mimic ecchymosis, they look like cellulitis. The patients often neglect these kind of lesions, may predispose to the development of the more severe aggressive form of angiosarcomas with the 5 year survival rate which is less than 20 percent. And when we discuss about advanced kind of lesions or we can say more advanced lesions are large and fleshy red tan to gray white mass in color as you can see on the screen with the margins that blend with the surrounding structures necrosis as well as hemorrhage of such kind of lesions are extremely common. Once you see the necrosis as well as ulceration, you can say that these are widespread of an aggressive or we can say advanced neoplasms. When we see the microscopic examination of these neoplasms, the extent of differentiation is extremely variable, which means ranging from plump atypical endothelial cells that form vascular channels to undifferentiated spindle cell tumors without uh, discernible blood vessels. And the endothelial cell origin can be demonstrated in the poorly differentiated tumors especially by staining for the endothelial cell markers CD31 and von Willebrand factor. This is how we often diagnose these kind of vascular neoplasms microscopically. So, this is what we need to know about uh, the angiosarcomas.